Welcome everyone, this is Greg Rock and I'd like you to welcome you to the latest uh, Digital Business Institute webcast. And today we're going to be talking about automating daily tasks with robotic process automation. And I'm thrilled to have both Clay Richardson with us and Cornelius Pohn, both of uh, Digital Fast Forward, uh, two of our faculty members and lead instructors for our digital business curriculum. And Digital Business Institute provides education and training on approaches and methodologies and tools to enable your digital business transformations. And RPA is a hot topic and will certainly be part of uh, your transformation efforts. And what we're trying to accomplish with this webcast is just to introduce the topic and give folks some uh, ideas on how they could possibly automate some of the daily tasks they face and also to show you RPA uh, in action. So well, let's dive right in. If, if you or your colleagues or your organization you know, finds uh, yourself spending an inordinate amount of time doing any of these following tasks, you know, extracting and entering data from forms, logging into multiple systems to start off your day, fraud reporting, downloading reports from websites, um, changing passwords, verifying address for clients, and, and dealing with uh, address changes, then RPA is something that you should take a look at. Uh, and we're hoping to uh, give you a, a nice overview of where and when you can uh, implement RPA and show you how RPA can help with this and many other tasks. And as I mentioned, uh, both uh, Clay Richardson and Cornelius Pohn are the principals of Digital Fast Forward. And they're going to be walking us through uh, some examples and use cases for RPA. Uh, Clay's background has spent a lot of time helping leaders uh, build executive strategies around uh, disruptive technologies. A lot of folks uh, will know Clay's work from Forrester Research. And we spent a lot of time on uh, digital business transformation as well as business process management. And Cornelius Pohn has spent a lot of his time focusing on emerging technologies, machine learning, Internet of Things, responsive web development, and also uh, teaches the RPA class for us at Digital Business Institute. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to Clay Richardson. Thank you for that introduction, Greg, and welcome, everyone. And so I'm sure you out there in the audience have heard robotic process automation. It's a buzzword. It's a very hot topic that you've run into, no doubt. And so before we get into different use cases, we want a level set on a definition for robotic process automation. And so. The way robotic process automation is defined is just the, it is the application of technology that automates workflows of administ administrative tasks and processes, and also leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning to complete and manage complex work tasks, right? And so this is a, a definition that shows a, a key component of RPA as applying intelligence, applying cognitive. So it's not just a lot of people think of RPA as just a robot doing rote tasks blindly. And where we're seeing the biggest impact for RPA is, is also bringing in that intelligence and the cognitive so the robot is learning over time. In terms of benefits that we see when working with clients around RPA, the, the key benefits are around reducing the risk of incorrectly entering data. Also, increasing compliance, making sure when a task or set of tasks are completed that they're following compliance requirements. And then reducing errors and reducing the amount of rework. So having the bot key in data uh, minimizing the number of errors or the, the chance that a step gets skipped, but also not requiring the same level of rework because something wasn't entered correctly. Reducing redundancy and variability, so making the process or a given procedure more standard, 
Um, and so we see this a lot with customers. We're working with a customer now where uh, for a, a specific change to a customer's information, they have 20, 30 different ways that that could be done. And not because <laughs> it, it's a standard procedure uh, that it's done these 20 or 30 different ways. It's more about uh, each person is doing it differently. So the customer has different outcomes depending on who they're working with. And then reducing the amount of training and retraining, right? So instead of having new employees uh, come on board and have to learn a lot of uh, cryptic tasks or tasks that are outdated, having the bot able to handle the large portion of the tasks and so the, the worker only having to deal with the most important steps or exceptions is really important. In terms of the value proposition, we see robotic automation having this virtuous cycle where most companies start looking at RPA because of the low initial investment, right? Instead of going and doing a big, uh, massive automation project, we see customers get started very quickly at a very low cost, uh, proving out the value and getting results, getting that ROI in a, in a very short period of time. But then as customers or companies start to look at RPA more strategically, they see it's an opportunity to improve agility, to be able to deliver solutions faster, but also to, uh, to improve agility of the technology and the applications that are in the organization. So if you have a legacy application, you're able to use RPA to still take advantage of that, that legacy application, but RPA can extend it to other applications that may be more modern if needed. And then into strategy execution. So uh, there's some banks that we work with and that we've interviewed where RPA has become a key part of their strategy as a company in terms of how they're able to spin up applications very quickly, but also how they begin to engage with customers. So instead of having an agent go and uh, log into 20 different systems, they actually have RPA doing a lot of that rope work behind the scenes while the customer service agent can work more directly with the customer. So it's improving uh, customer experience and allowing the company to focus more on delivering a better experience. And then improving transparency. So being able to actually collect data, find exceptions, and have full traceability is really important. And so this virtual cycle, virtual cycle is really important in terms of how we see RPA impacting the enterprise. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to walk you through three of the most common use cases that we see around RPA. And so the first use case we see, we've seen across numerous clients, numerous companies logging into multiple systems. So Instead of, I mentioned this earlier, instead of uh, a employee logging into uh, 20 systems to get started, having the robot actually log into all these different systems. Downloading website reports is another use case. We've seen this particularly within financial organizations or finance teams like the CFO's office uh, where they need to go and download numerous reports from different websites that need to be analyzed. Um, and so RPA, very good at attacking uh, that use case, reducing the amount of time spent just logging into websites and downloading. Then the last piece we see uh, across different healthcare agencies. We've seen this at different healthcare uh, agencies, both on the provider side and on the, the payer side. Um, is extracting and entering data from forms. So receiving forms that might be in PDF format or might have been emailed in PDF format, extracting the data out of those forms, and then uh, entering that data into core systems of record in the organization instead of having people key in them. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hand it over to Cornelius to walk you through each one of these use cases and also give you 
uh, demo real live example of a few of the use cases in action. So Cornelius? Okay, thanks Clay and thanks Greg. So um, what I'm going to focus on is to show you what the before looked like um, for some of the uh, use cases that Clay has just mentioned and also the after um, in the point, or point of reduction of the number of steps that needed to happen for a user or the use case to be completed. So the first use case that we just talk about is logging into multiple systems. So you see this a lot in call centers and up in businesses that have a lot of employees having to deal with a lot of different systems and dealing with customers at the same time. Whereby every morning an employee comes in, they log in into one system, log into another system. And in this case, the use case that we have is there was a situation where the client had its employees log into an order system. They also then logged into some asset management system. They logged into their financial system. And then the next step after they did all the logging in, they had to go update data in all of these desktop systems. After they did that, the last step was to go ahead and verify that the data is accurate. So this actually presented a challenge in that not only do you log into multiple systems, but you're doing a lot of copy and paste. You can introduce risk in that there are errors that could happen, somebody could fat finger, um, an eight instead of a zero, and so forth. So after they employed the robotics piece, RPA, we were able to save the time where the logging in happened all at the same time when the user came in in the morning. After that, the next step was the robot was able to retrieve all of the data that the user needed to make a decision and then it copied all that information into the other system. So instead of having a human being doing all those steps, um, they only had to do a couple of steps afterwards which centered around verification of data as well as handling any exceptions that resulted from the um, robot executing. Okay. The next use case that we want to touch upon, and we'll give a quick demo for this one as well, is downloading website reports. As Clay had already mentioned, the, the challenge that the accounting staff for this particular client faced was that every day the staff had to go logging into multiple sites, and all, the, all of them looked different, and then had to go download reports. These that could be weekly, monthly, or even quarterly, and yearly reports that contain a lot of financial data. This took an average two to three hours every day. That's the first thing that person did. And after they did that, then they have to go into each downloaded report, pull out the relevant data, and then start the analysis process. So the solution that we came up with using a bot was to go ahead and auto logging into all these websites go look for the current reports that needed to be downloaded and then saved in the correct for file format in the correct location, thereby saving time and also reducing the amount of aggravation that you had in terms of going in every morning and doing the same process when it could be automated. Okay. Um, so they continue along the use case. Um, just to showcase what, how the robot was able to reduce the time spent, the user started by logging into the reporting website, locating the correct report, doing the download. At some point, sometimes you have to search report for the, the relevant data that you needed. Then you copy that data that you received into key systems. We were able to reduce these to three steps. We're using the robot where the robot did the auto login did the downloading, and then it extracted the relevant data that was needed, and then keyed this into the correct systems as well. So at this point, Greg, if you don't mind showing or pulling up the demo, and I'll briefly uh, describe the, what the demo showcases and before we start. So in here on the left side, you see one screen that says manual. So that is the person doing the actual job manually by themselves. On the right side where it says automated is the bot doing the same work that the person is doing, but doing it a lot faster and with less errors. 
the use case here as well required logging into this website, National Normal Township. Navigating through the website, pulling up the relevant data that was needed, and then including that data that you pull out into the spreadsheet that's on the right side. So we'll let this run for a few minutes or a few seconds and you keep notice of the time it takes the manual entry to happen as well as the automated entry to happen. So if you can just kick this off, Greg. Thanks. So as you have noticed, the robot, the automated side, took a little bit over 30 seconds to complete. Um, it entered multiple rows, probably over 20 to 30 different rows and multiple columns of the same data. On the left side, the person is still continuing um, has, and has entered about three to four different rows of data and is still copying and pasting. So as you see, the advantage of using the robot is it's a lot faster, it's a lot more consistent and it saves the person or the, the organization a lot of time and effort as well as money in terms of having a person do repetitive work that could be automated. So we'll let this run for a little while and we'll actually pause it and then we'll continue to the next use case. So if we could go back to the slides, thank you. So the next use case that we see a lot, and as I already mentioned, you see this a lot from healthcare, you know, those are financial operations, is data extraction. So you have forms, people fill out forms, they send them to your organization. These could be as simple as an application for a service. It could be an invoice. And what you need to do from that point is retrieve that data from the PDF and enter it into the source of the target system. So instead of having to do this manually, because it's a very time-consuming task and there's a lot of potential for a lot of data errors, you could have a robot retrieve the document and then pull out the relevant information and then fill out the target system. So this will help eliminate errors. It will also help speed up the amount of um, applications or forms that you can process in any given day. And it allows the staff to focus on much more significant tasks like processing exceptions, like actually dealing and addressing customer concerns instead of focusing on data entry. So the next use case, uh, this particular use case demo, um, if you could bring that up, Greg. Oh, thanks, <laughs> is we're going to go ahead and open up a PDF. We will search through that key PDF and identify key data points that we need to pull. We'll open up a financial system, and we will manually enter those key data points, and then once again, you have to verify that the data was entered correctly. Using the robot, the data was extracted from the PDF, open the financial system, and key the data in automatically. So once again, reducing the amount of effort and time that it takes to enter data that could be automated. At this point, we'd like to show you the demo that was built around this particular use case. And then it's similar to the one that we had just showed before. On the left side there, you see the manual data entry. And then on the right side, you see the automated entry. I also just want to highlight that on the left, it shows a sample state and sales tax return document, right? You, you, the, the typical use case for this is you read the data from that PDF, you go log in into the state tax return website, and then you go enter all the relevant information, you press submit, um, 
you could end up having hundreds of these forms if you have a particular organization where each time you're filing a tax return, you can actually do a lot of them in one day. And as we know, come end of quarter or end of year, there's always a, a rush as well as a lot of influx of documents that need to be entered. So we'll kick this off and I'll let it run and then we'll talk to it um, once the automated piece completes. Go ahead, Greg, thanks. If you could run it. Okay. Thanks. So as you can see, it took a little bit less than 30 seconds to be able to complete that particular process. Um, and the manual data entry is still ongoing. So as what you've seen earlier on, the robot is a lot faster, it's a lot more consistent. This website is repetitive, so it makes it easy to be able to go through the website, select the data that's needed from the PDF, and do the data entry. Thanks, Greg. Um, all right. So. I'll turn it over to Greg to go ahead and wrap up, and thanks for everyone. Cornelius <clears throat> and Clay, thank you so much for uh, taking us through that. I think, um, you know, folks are, are interested in trying to figure out how to be more efficient and more accurate, and I think uh, seeing RPA in action is a, a great way to kind of demystify some of the concerns that folks may have about it. And I appreciate you guys sharing uh, some of the solutions that you've implemented for your clients across the, the various industries. Um, you know, we hope that uh, this webcast will help get uh, your wheels turning on ways that RPA can assist you with your organization. Um, the, uh, the information that we have in here is uh, part of the information that we share in our uh, one-day uh, dedicated RPA class. And within that class, we help folks to understand the difference between RPA and robotic desktop automation. Uh, we help them to understand where and when RPA uh, is best to be deployed. Um, there are certain uh, situations and use cases where RPA is the right solution. Um, it's not uh, the um, uh, solution to be deployed in all instances, but in some of the cases that we've talked about here that are, low, that are uh, uh, daily tasks that can be automated, um, there's a great savings for organizations to uh, implement RPA. And we also talk about uh, keeping the customer in mind and the role that this plays in your digital transformation efforts as well as security and, government and governance for bots. And I think uh, one of the things our folks enjoy is the class features, uh, very hands-on. We have a software lab that we use, and you actually get to create your own bot um, in the class uh, before the end of the day. And so that uh, RPA class is part of a comprehensive curriculum that we have as part of uh, Digital Business Institute's learning path. There are a series of uh, eight courses that we have, and uh, Cornelius and Clay deliver the vast majority of these. But we have an introductory course to digital business. We also uh, teach folks about uh, design thinking and how that can be applied. Uh, robotic process automation, obviously, and digital customer experience are some of the core classes. And uh, we had have been delivering these uh, since uh, early this year. Uh, April in Chicago is where they kicked off. We've gotten a lot of great feedback on the classes. And the, that uh, learning path leads folks to earning a, a digital business certificate, uh, the first of its kind in the industry. And that certificate program is part of a family of certificates that we've been offering uh, for over 16 years now, a lot of folks know us from our business process management uh, certificates, uh, as well as business architecture. Uh, digital business is an important uh, component in addition to that family. 
And so um, we're excited to uh, be working with Clay and Cornelius on delivering these throughout the year. And these classes are offered in a host of different delivery methods. And so if you are uh, able to travel and attend face-to-face -face events, we'll be in New York in November. We also do the classes live online. Uh, that will be happening in November as well. And group training, both in-house and online. Uh, last, I wanted to mention that in our recent DC event, we had launched a, a new option for attending courses, which is virtual training. And so while we are teaching at our physical locations of the cities that we travel throughout the year, if you're not able to make it to that city, you can actually participate in those live classes via the Internet. And we have a full duplex, uh, high def video and audio, so you can participate and interact with the instructor and the other students in the class. We had tremendous feedback on this at the, the DC event, and it's a great option if you need the training and you can't travel or don't have the budget to travel or it's just not convenient, and uh, really it is uh, quite an, an engaging way to take in the training. I would encourage folks to visit Digital Business Institute. There is a lot of original harm pen and articles and white papers and webcasts that are available on there. If you are a member of either our VPN Institute or Business Architecture Institute, you can simply add your uh, digital business uh, preference uh, to your subscriptions, and you can start getting information on RPA and design thinking. And if you uh, are uh, available, in the November time frame, you have a couple options of either coming to the New York event, attending it virtually, or you can take a look at the live online schedule on our website. And with that, I'd like to thank uh, both uh, Clay Richardson and Cornelius Palm with Digital Fast Forward for coming to share their expertise with us and uh, helping folks to understand how RPA can play a role in, in simplifying their lives and getting more done, which is a, a, a trick we'd always like to uh, be able to pull off. So thank you very much, guys. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for attending this webcast. We look forward to hosting you at the next one. Thank you. Thank you.